Hello everyone, Flo here. Welcome to today's presentation. So in today's presentation, we are going to talk about data federation. Uh, this is an interesting concept uh, when it comes to data systems. And it's important for us to know what exactly data federation is, uh, some of the pros and cons, and where uh, it could be relevant for your organization, or where you can see some drawbacks if you go with the federated uh, approach. So that said, we're going to dive in uh, really quick uh, with an example of federation. Uh, federation is something that uh, a lot of us might be familiar with, especially if uh, you live in the United States of America. That's one example. There are a lot of other uh, countries in the world that will follow this idea of the federation. So if you understand what the federation is, I think logically it would make sense to understand what the data federation is. So in the United States, uh, the United States has a bunch of states, I think about 50, and that number might change. Um, and uh, if you think of, let me just draw a square, uh, assuming that these are all the states uh, in the United States, right? One, two, three, four, five, uh, 49, 50, right? All the way to 50. So assume that these are all the individual states. I'm not going to draw all of them. And the whole idea of federation, you have uh, the federal government here, uh, that is... Um, that has power, all right? Uh, so this is the seat of power, Washington, D.C. And the whole idea of federation is you want to delegate as much autonomy or as much power uh, to the constituents of the federation. So uh, in this case, the federation are states, are individual states, all right? So the federal government you know, does have some power in itself, right? The federal uh, government, federal power and federal laws uh, that are common across all the, the different states, but then you have the individual states that are constituent of the federation that do have individual powers. And those powers give them certain autonomy, gives them certain things they can do, uh, uh, irrespective of the federal government. Now, usually, usually uh, in, the, in the United States, in the case of the United States, in the case of the USA, the federal law uh, trumps the state law, if there is any dispute in that case, right? So, uh, if this, if the, the federal government, if the state says, "Oh, you cannot do that," and the federal government passes a law and says everyone can in the federation can do that, that should override the state law. Now, I'm not a lawyer, uh, so don't take this as legal advice or in any form, but that's just conceptually what's going on here. So, if we have that at the back of the mind, where we've seen federation as uh, as it is in the United States. What does uh, data federation uh, then mean and where does it come in relevant uh, for organizations? So if you think about organizations uh, in the space of data, uh, you might end up with a bunch of different data systems, right? You might have a MySQL that is uh, running your, you know, your applications. You might have a, a CRM a system somewhere that is running on a different uh, database. Uh, you might have some files here, which is your data lake. All right. Uh, you might have another database here, uh, which might be uh, SAP, which would be your ERP uh, system. And so you have a bunch of these different systems that organizations uh, might end up with, you know, either by accident or by design. Now, uh, as an individual analyst, if I want to query my SQL data, or if I want to query my sales data, so this is uh, sales, right? If I want to query my sales data, I can simply go into my uh, sales system and I can write a SQL statement to query that data, all right? If I want to figure out some things going on with my customer relationship management, I can go into that system and figure that out in independently, all right? And Again, within the system, you know, there are certain rules and regulations that apply here. It's just like within each state, there are certain rules and regulations that will apply uh, for that state and that state alone. Uh, if I want to figure out my um, ERP system, I can go in there. If I'm working within my data lake, I can go in there to figure that out. And if you look at this, we're going in independently. But what happens if, you know, and this is usually the case for a lot of organizations, all right, I might have my, uh, my federal system here, or I might have a system here where I want to get visibility to uh, my sales information mixed to my 
uh, CRM information mixed to my data lake and joined to my ERP, all right? I want to get a view across what's happening on all the systems, not individually, but what's happening to all the systems, all right? Uh, one approach to do that could be, all right, we're going to create a large data warehouse here, all right? And then we're going to migrate all that data. We're going to move that data into the data warehouse, all right? And then this would be the central place uh, for us to query that data. Because now if we create it into the data warehouse, we can query that data in the data warehouse. And this is where data warehousing comes into play. You go into the different systems, you write some e uh, ETL jobs, it brings that data over to the data warehouse. And this is what people have been doing for a long time and it definitely works, all right? Data warehouses have been around for a while, they've evolved, um, they've taken different forms, but it's been the go-to approach for solving business problems uh, when it comes to working with data. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is some limitations or there is some uh, effort that comes with making a data warehouse work. For example, uh, we need to build all the e pipelines uh, to move that data uh, from the source system uh, into this data warehouse so we can run queries. And that takes effort, it takes uh, commitment, and it, it definitely brings in certain points of failure, right? What happens if I'm trying to do my query and my data warehouse uh, is out of date because my ETL job broke and so my data isn't present, all right? So you can now start having uh, certain things that you might have to babysit, you might have to manage, and uh, there are certain drawbacks that comes with it, all right? So this entire process of, you know, doing the ETL to populate your data warehouse uh, could come with challenges. So what some organizations are, are doing or where the federation uh, data federation uh, comes into play is to say, all right, instead of uh, doing all of this movement of data, what if we uh, delegate, uh, have one system that delegates the analytics to the different constituents of the federal uh, data federation, all right? So in here, I will have my federal uh, entry point or my federal system, or you can think about it as the federal government. And from here, I can just write a SQL statement or I can write a query and that query would be able to just go down directly to those systems and talk to them, all right, and do joins against those systems without me having to physically move the data to somewhere else, all right. So here I can just, within my, uh, my, uh, my federation or my federal uh, system up here, I can just issue a query uh, that would talk, that would have an adapter, there would be an adapter that can pass the query down to uh, or push down the query to MySQL. Uh, the same adapter can push it down to um, uh, to CRM, uh, to Postgres, to ERP, to Oracle, or to what to any other system that is part of that federation or that my adapter is able to talk to. All right, and this comes with certain benefits. All right, now I don't have to do any other movement. Uh, I'm actually pushing the analytics or my query to each individual part of the federation and making them do the work, and I can come back with the result. Um, and so th this seems very appealing uh, in terms of how it would work. So if you hear about data federation, this is basically uh, what is happening um, uh, for that to, to happen. There are many tools in the market that would do data federation. Um, I know uh, for sure Snowflake uh, would do that uh, using external tables, right? That is kind of like a data federation where you have data sitting in S3 buckets and you can go within uh, Snowflake and you can query that data, all right? Uh, AWS uh, has a bunch of uh, things for, for federation, right? One of them being uh, Spectrum. Again, with the whole idea uh, being, you can have data sitting in, uh, uh, in S3 buckets in AWS. So this could be your data lake, S3 buckets, all right? And right from Spectrum, you can issue a query that will talk to that data lake. At the same time, it can talk to MySQL and it can talk to different uh, systems. All right, um, uh, Big, uh, BigQuery uh, has some form of federation where you, in BigQuery, you can issue a query uh, to talk to the data within BigQuery as an example. And at the same time, that query can go talk to MySQL sitting somewhere else, right? But you have to set all of that up. But it's certainly possible to push down the query uh, do the same, do the joins within the same uh, statement and get your result. Now, uh, this all sounds good and as if it's a fairy tale, right? Some might say, 
you know what through i this is appealing why isn't everybody doing this is it too good to be true all right and if you're thinking that this seems too good to be true if you don't have to do any etl and you can still run your queries it's probably is because you're right right there are certain limitations that comes with this idea of uh, data federation and i've been in the space where i've seen you know where people started uh hitting data federation they liked it then the data warehousing boom came out and people hated federation and i feel that is, we're kind of going back to the space where people are beginning to like federation more and more right especially with data lakes and you know being able to push queries there without having to move your data around so what are some of the drawbacks if you think about a chain right uh that has uh links all right and uh, you're trying to use that chain to, to 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 tie something and if one of those chains is weak all right the chain is only as strong as its weakest link all right so if i'm going to depend on all these chains to come back and give me a sql query result all right and this one is good right this one is okay this one is bad really bad and this one is fast and this one is premium all right so just assume that these are the kind of uh, performance i can get from my different systems so this system might be very good at giving me results this one might be kind of okay this one might be fast but if i'm running one query and i'm you know pushing that to all these different systems and waiting for them to give me the results if this guy if this one in the middle is going to take you know five minutes to give me results whereas everybody is taking one second what well, my query is going to return in five minutes so you have this single point of failure this choke point because you, now you're having to depend on everybody uh doing their job to uh to give you the results right similar to the federal republic if you have one state in the federation that is kind of problematic it might end up dragging down the entire federation or making it not work all right so uh, this is one there are other drawbacks you can find with this whole idea of federation but this is the biggest one i think i would see all right you're only as good as the weakest link in that federation and then once you start talking about enforcing policies just managing them get, getting everybody to be on the same line it, it's challenging all right just like the way the the federal republic of uh, or the federation within the the united states which is the federal republic uh, does have its challenges you know keeping all the states you know under control at least it's working but uh, it does have its own challenges so it's not all uh, roses and glory glory so that's one of the challenges you might find with the data federation and this would allow us to recap on this topic all right data federation so if you hear about this term now we know what it is uh data federation is owned is that idea that builds from you know politics which we have of you know uh, countries that are federations uh in the world of data you have uh, different data systems and the whole idea is you can just use one interface to push down query to all the different systems without having to move data and create a data warehouse all right so if you have a federation you might not need a data warehouse as much so it's good because you don't have to do a lot of data movement that works but it comes with its drawbacks and its limitations because well, you can only be as good as your weakest link. And that's just one of them. Uh, one of the drawbacks. Governance becomes an issue. A lot of things becomes an issue uh, to maintain the federation, to make it work optimally. There are a lot of players in the market that offer federated systems. Uh, like I mentioned, Snowflake, you know, uh, it's a cloud data warehouse. Uh, you can query data from Snowflake or you can query data di directly from S3. That's some form of federation. AWS has Spectrum, uh, which is kind of their federation tool that allows you to query data from Redshift. You can query data from S3 buckets. Uh, you can query data from MySQL. So that's really what uh, AWS is pushing for the for the solution. BigQuery has uh, has its own as well. There are many, many, many products in the market. I can't even begin to name them that are data federation, focus on data federation helping people solve this problem. All right, thanks for watching. This is Fru. Today we've looked at data federation. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to go into the comment section below. I'll leave that. Uh, if there's any topic you want me to do a video on, again, just jump into the comment section below. I'll leave that and I'll be more than happy to see what I can do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.